Hi everyone, welcome to our first ACNC webinar for 2019. Happy New Year to everyone. We hope you had a great festive season and a bit of time to relax and rest up for the year ahead. Today we're going to focus on the topic of gifts and honorariums. Uh, that's an issue which calls for some care and some diligence from charities and their responsible persons. My name's Chris Richards. I'm from the ACNC's education team. With me is my colleague Heath Eldridge. Hi Heath. Hi Chris. Before we launch into the webinar proper, as usual, some quick preliminaries. If you've got any trouble with the audio uh, for the webinar, you can try listening through your phone. You can call the number listed in the email you will have received upon sign up and put in an access code and listen to the webinar that way. You can also uh, ask a question at any time throughout the webinar by using the tools in the GoToWebinar panel on your screen. We've got a couple of our colleagues, Matt and Michael, ready and waiting to respond to any questions as they come through. We will try to answer as many questions as possible, but depending on how many we get, we may not be able to get to them uh, all. If your question isn't answered, do feel free to send us an email at uh, education at acnc.gov.au and we will respond uh, afterwards. We do allow a little bit of time at the end for a Q&A session uh, where we can. So if you wanted to watch the presentation and save your questions until the end, that's fine as well. We're recording this webinar as we always do uh, and the recording uh, will be published on the ACNC website in the coming days. Uh, and also any website references that we mention in this webinar are either on the screen or in uh, in our chat as we go along. They will be included in a follow-up email and that will be sent out to everyone who is registered in the next day or two. Last thing, we always value your feedback. So if you've got any, uh, any idea or any ways that we can improve our webinars, um, especially with our schedule for 2019. Uh, what's, it's developed, it's getting there, and we'll be listing a few more webinars up on our webinars page in the coming day or two. Uh, but if you have any feedback, let us know uh, via the short survey at the end of today's session or send us an email with your comments. So, onwards. Gifts and honorariums, here's what we'll cover today. We're going to start with a uh, general outline of what gifts and honorariums are, as well as look at why some charities provide them. Uh, important uh, is uh, the ACNC's expectations for um, the provision of gifts and honorariums, as well as the legal implications and some of the considerations that accompany them. We'll also look at some of the questions charities should actually ask themselves, things they should consider uh, if they're thinking about providing a gift or an honorarium. Uh, and throughout this webinar, we'll most likely refer to the ACNC's recently published guidance on the issue. That guidance can be found on our website at www.acnc.gov.au forward slash gifts. Some of the information you'll hear today comes from this guidance, so it's well worth having a look at. And just before we start, an explanation and some clarification. Some charities might refer refer to gifts and honorariums by other names. They might call them allowances or ex gratia payments. Whatever they might be called, the same considerations that we're going to talk about today still apply. What are gifts and honorariums? When it comes down to it, they're pretty similar. The ACNC draws a slight distinction between the two in that we say an honorarium is a payment made to someone in recognition of their service to the organisation. That might be service over a long period of time, or it might be service that has gone above and beyond the norm. But the key phrase here is service. That's how many organisations, including charities, distinguish between a gift and an honorarium. A gift, as spelled out on the slide, is something given to a person without an obligation. It might be given for a variety of reasons, whereas an honorarium is more likely to have that service component. And it can be in the form of goods, money, or other property. Both gifts and honorariums are made without obligation. They may be made out of appreciation or in recognition, but they're made voluntarily and without obligation. Heath's just um, touched on some of the reasons why a charity might provide a gift or an honorarium. Um, we've provided a couple of examples on, on this slide here. Um, a gift is usually a bit smaller. It might be offered as, say, a, a token of appreciation, maybe to a volunteer, uh, or to a supporter who has helped 
during a fundraiser or during another activity of some sort. An honorarium might be given in recognition of service. Um, that's, that's often sort of the distinguishing uh, feature there. Might be as uh, a service as a board member or a committee member, or for some time spent in a, a specific role on the board or the committee, you know, maybe as a, as a treasurer or something like that. Uh, again, there's no problems with charities offering these gifts or honorariums as long as they are legal and as long as they meet ACNC uh, expectations. And what are those expectations? Well, the chief one is that any gift or honorarium should be of a token nature. They shouldn't provide anyone with a sizable or significant personal benefit. This sort of thing really does put it at risk a charity's not-for-profit standing and can see a charity at risk of breaching the ACNC guidelines. Not only that, but, and we're going to touch on this in a bit more detail later, payments like these should not be seen as regular ones. They should be closer to one-offs or rare, or else they can easily be seen as payments, wages or remuneration. That is a, that is a key consideration. We will, as Heath said, touch on that uh, later on. Um, but the, the regularity or the non-regularity of payments is, a, is an important consideration when looking at this issue. Um, key thing when it comes to gifts and honorariums is that your responsible persons, a charity's responsible persons, have a, a massive role to play. Um, as we set out in, in our guidance uh, and, and here on this slide as well, responsible persons uh, are the ones who must figure out what an acceptable value of a gift or an honorarium might be. Um, responsible persons need to think about their charity's financial position when, when looking at this idea of acceptable value. Um, simply put, don't consider providing a gift or an honorarium if your charity can't afford to do so. Now, that sounds like common sense. It is common sense. Um, it might be nice to provide a thank you gift or, or something similar to a volunteer or to a board member. But if you're a small charity uh, running on the, the smell of an oily rag, um, Doing so might not be the most responsible or the most thoughtful behaviour, uh, and it might not be prudent financial management. From a legal perspective, any decision to provide a gift or honorarium must not be at odds to the requirement for it to remain registered as a charity with the ACNC. Among those obligations are for the charity to remain as a not-for-profit and comply with its purposes, and to be accountable to its members. It's important to emphasise the role that responsible persons have in this. They must comply with their duties to act in good faith in the charity's best interests and to further its purposes, to disclose perceived or actual conflicts of interest, and to properly manage the charity's financial affairs. So if providing a gift or honorarium means these things do not occur, that is, it puts the charity's standing and finances at risk, or it could constitute a perceived or actual conflict of interest, then that becomes an issue and it needs more careful consideration. We, we mentioned here too just um, the idea of conflicts of interest uh, and, and the concept of, of related party and related party transaction. That's another one that I know that we get a lot of queries here at the ACNC about yeah. those related party transactions, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And it's important to remember that conflicts of interest do come up and it's the most important piece of advice we give a charity is that it should have policies in place to manage those. Yeah. So for example, if there's the potential for a payment between people that are related, mm. the person should exclude them could, or could potentially exclude themselves from that conversation. Yeah. Things like that. There's not a single rule, but it's important for them to have a process to ensure that a potential conflict of interest is managed appropriately. Yeah. All right. Here we go, hold on, there we go. There's some points to think about here when it comes to uh, what you should be, I guess, considering uh, when you sit down as a, as a board or a committee um, and, and consider providing a gift or an honorarium. The first is a uh, private benefit. Um, and you should ask, what, would providing a gift or an honorarium create a, a situation where there's a private benefit for an individual in your charity? Uh, the, the next point is, is transparency uh, and accountability. Um, how transparent are the processes on, on making this sort of decision? Uh, how are you going to properly record the decision? Uh, how is the discussion 
leading up to the making of that decision be going to be noted and, and recorded. Um, doing all these things right, going through all these processes, dotting I's, crossing T's, that ensures transparency, it ensures accountability and ensures that the decision making processes that, that you go through and the discussions that go through are open and transparent and, uh, and are done the right way uh, in, in that respect. Um, again, is, is providing a gift or an honorarium in the charity's best interests? It can't be in its uh, best interest if it puts the charity's existence at risk or if it places it in breach of ACNC obligations or, or legal requirements. Um, now this, uh, this issue also sort of touches on another point listed on the slide here, which is poor financial management. Providing a gift or an honorarium when you can't afford it or when you have more pressing financial needs uh, does not constitute responsible management of a charity's financial affairs. Uh, again, as we mentioned before, look at conflicts of interest in making a decision. Uh, as a board or a committee member, you shouldn't be giving the thumbs up to a gift or an honorarium if you are, for example, uh, a relation uh, or uh, you know, you're in business with the person who might uh, be receiving that gift or honorarium. The last point here um, we look at is, is employment and taxation law. Um, that's one that can be easily overlooked. And really the question should be here, how will the provision of, of, of such gifts be reported and, and are there tax implications? Uh, now there is uh, information about this on the ATO site, uh, about providing uh, honorariums and, and whether in providing honorariums is whether the recipient uh, has to declare it as accessible income, for example. Um, so that's something that, that both the potential recipient, but also the charity uh, needs to be aware of. Now there's, here's a slide here. We've got about five or six questions that you should perhaps ask. Um, as, we, as we state here, first thing you should do is ask yourselves whether the provision of a gift or an honorarium is a one-off uh, or whether it is more, I guess, uh, more accurately described as a wage or a pay packet uh, or, or remuneration or re reimbursement. Um, now, there's a few other questions here as well. I'll, I'll let Heath run through them. Obviously, the first couple are important. Is your charity allowed by its governing documents to provide a gift or operate or honorarium as part of its operations? If it's not, that's going to be a problem. Yeah. So <laughs> you, you sh we would certainly expect you to be following your governing documents. How does your charity determine the value of any gift or honorarium it provides? This is something the responsible persons have a key role in. It may be through a discussion among the responsible persons or at the management level, and it may be by consulting with other similar charities. But there's a couple of other questions you should consider, both of which relate to your charity's people. What will the charity's supporters, donors and members think if your charity decides to start providing gifts or honorariums? even members of the public who may be yeah, engaged with your charity. Absolutely. Do you risk putting them offside or losing their support? And how are you going to inform them or consult with them on this decision? Do you need to? Mm. This can be very tricky. For example, if you don't do this right, you risk hurting the charity's reputation and its donations, especially if the gift or honorarium is of significant value. We're just also at the last point here. I know I, I mentioned it just quickly at the top of this slide, the, the idea um, that the, the, that a gift or honorarium is labelled as such when really it isn't. It really, it might be, as it says here, remuneration or, or reimbursement or, or a pay packet. Um, look, it's vital for your charity to be very clear on this. You, you shouldn't be offering uh, or labelling something as a gift or an honorarium where in fact it, it is remuneration for expenses. It is reimbursement for expenses. It's, it's, a, it's a wage or a pay packet. Um, do not get these things mixed up. Do not get these things confused. Um, honorariums and gifts, they're one-offs. Often they're of a token nature. These, uh, these things like wages, like reimbursements and all that sort of stuff, they're very different um, and they can't really be crossed uh, like that. Keep them separate, keep them separate. Um, this sort of okay. issue can be covered or it should be covered in a policy your charity develops on gifts or honorariums, especially of course, if it's looking to pay gifts and honorariums. Yes. 
Now, the slide here says formal policy, and that can sound a little bit fancy. <laughs> really, when we say policy, we're not necessarily asking you to get all over the top. Just set out some solid, practical, workable guidelines your organisation can establish and follow. Obviously, that does look different for different sizes of organisations. Absolutely right, yeah. A yeah. bigger one, you know, for example, might have that policy on its website or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. Whereas for a smaller group, it might be just something the board of or the responsible persons have agreed on. And that's where having it having it documented in, in some way is, is a vital part. It's great to have a policy. If it's not documented anywhere, then who, who's, who's going to know about it? You, ha you have to have it documented somewhere. And if you've gone to the trouble of getting a policy together, then why not document it? Uh, that's, that's just common sense. Um, as for what the policy can include or should include, um, there should be clear statements on, on when a gift or an honorarium can be provided, uh, as well as the circumstances that might might see its provision. Um, you know, when will your charity even consider providing one? Uh, it should look at who the who the decision makers are when it comes to providing a gift or an honorarium and how those decisions are made, the processes that you will go through, uh, how your charity will ensure that their provision is appropriate, what steps will your charity put in place, who will discuss the issue, how the decision is reached, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, and how you'll inform people about any such provision uh, and maybe how you might have them involved in any such decision if appropriate or whether you do need to or wish to uh, inform people uh, about any decision like this. Importantly, when you set up a policy, it should be a help and not a hindrance. It shouldn't be a burden to follow. One thing we haven't touched on is how gifts and honorariums can impact on the charity's financial reporting. Gifts or honorariums to certain people, for example, related parties, which might include the responsible persons, have to be disclosed. These disclosures occur under Australian accounting standards and as part of the medium and large charities, that is charities with revenue over $250,000, part of their reporting to the ACNC. Yep. There's more about related parties on the ACNC website that can be found at www.acnc.gov.au slash related party. But generally speaking, related parties include key management personnel of a charity, for example, a responsible person or a close member of a responsible person's family. So, some key points to remember. First couple, uh, that the emphasis for gifts and honorariums should be that they are of a token nature and that they should, they should not provide anyone with a significant personal benefit. It's okay for these things to be small, but people shouldn't be getting wealthy, <laughs> wealthy off of gifts or honorariums. Um, linked to that is the need for charities to ensure that the size of any, any gift or honorarium they provide is appropriate and doesn't threaten your, your charity in, in, in any way. And again, we emphasise again, responsible persons are the, are the key people there. Gifts or honorariums offered must not breach the charity's legal obligations or its obligations to the ACNC. It is important that charities have issues like conflicts of interest, related party transactions and private benefit in mind when considering gifts and honorariums. Responsible persons need to ensure these things are in order and ensure accountability to members and determine whether providing a gift or honorarium is in the charity's best interests. Uh as well as considering if a gift or honorarium is in the charity's best interests, uh, charities should be clear on any potential or actual effects uh, this might have on grants or funding arrangements. Point six, right there in front of you, it's a very important one as well. Ensure you're not considering gifts or honorariums when instead you should actually be looking at reimbursement or uh, of expenses or even just uh, paying someone as a, as a contractor uh, or as an employee. That's about the end of our formal presentation today. We'll open things up to questions. We'll now open it up to questions and we've already had quite a few come in. We have had. Um, we've, got, we've got one here that's, that's come through. Um, we, charity has asked that they've got an individual that has provided significant work on a, on a pro bono basis. Uh, is it reasonable to thank them by way of a gift? Look, I'd say that it may well be. Mm. I think when you look at those definitions we talked about earlier, that would be more what we'd call an honorarium, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. But um, 
particularly given the word significant here. Mm. Um, yeah, that that might be a might be an honorarium, but yeah, not that not that it really makes that no, much of a difference. Right. Um, and the answer is that it, it may well be appropriate, but they'd need to consider all the things that we've talked about here today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's also, um, and we mentioned earlier on, there's some information, uh, some handy information too, uh, on the ATO website, our colleagues uh, over at the ATO, um, have some information on honorariums. If you go onto the ATO site and you search honorariums, um, you'll find it. It's, it looks more from the almost the other side of things, from um, a volunteer's uh, perspective, and particularly looks at whether the provision of an honorarium from a say a charity to a volunteer becomes part of that volunteer's becomes part of their income that they have to go through tax, declare, and all of that sort of stuff. Um, it's an interesting, there's an interesting section on there and there's a couple of, I guess, useful examples um, that are handy for a charity to know, but also handy for, say, someone who might be receiving a, uh, a an honorarium to know. Um, and I've actually got them here, so I'm going to read them out. Um, now, the first example here is uh, an honorarium that is not accessible income, uh, that doesn't have to be assessed, doesn't have to be put on tax. And the example given by the ATO here is that uh, a gentleman by the name of Michael works as a computer programmer at the local city council and volunteers as a referee for the local uh, footy league. Uh, this year, he organised an accreditation course for new referees. He applied for a grant, he arranged advertising, he assembled course materials and booked venues. Michael, for his efforts, is awarded an honorarium of $100 now, the ATO, uh, the ATO guide here says that that example is not accessible income. The example that is accessible income is this one. And that's uh, someone by the name of Judy, has a graphic design business and volunteers at a local art gallery. Judy prepares the gallery's annual report using her business's software and equipment. At the gallery's annual general meeting, Judy is awarded an honorarium of $800 in appreciation of her services. Now, the ATO lists this example as having the income as being accessible because it is a reward for services connected to her income producing activities. Now, that's a I guess a, a significant uh, distinction between the two. Um, if something is a bit removed from your normal job as, you know, obviously people have jobs, they volunteer in other ways too. If something's a little bit removed from that, the ATO guidance or the ATO advice here is that it might not be accessible income. If on the other hand, the work is done as a volunteer and it's directly related to the income producing activities of that person, then it may well be accessible income. Again, go and talk to the ATO if, uh, if you need further guidance on that as a volunteer. Uh, and again, feel free as a, as a, a charity or, a, or, or an organisation like that to either come to us or come to the ATO if you wish to talk about these, these matters further. Yep. Absolutely. It's one of those things where you probably seek advice from a, a tax planner or from the ATO. Yes, you know, absolutely It does right. depend on the facts of the case. Yeah. And each case is different. Each charity is different, as we always say. Um, now, that's about it, I think. We've whipped through this in relatively quick time, which is good because it's lunchtime and you should go and have lunch if you're uh, on this side of the country. Uh, if you're not and you're on the other side of the country, it's probably coffee time. So either way, that's that's fine and we won't hold you up for very much longer. Um, we have some associated resources here. Again, the uh, our our gifts and honorariums guidance at forward slash gifts. That's, that's very handy. Uh, recommend you uh, have a a really good read over of that one. That's uh, that's good stuff. Uh, our governance standards advice, and there's the um, that's the link for the ATO um, guidance and information that we just drew on. Um, again, bookmark that one if you want to. It's well worth a look. It's well worth just keeping that sort of um, that sort of stuff in mind uh, as you go along. We ask you to stay in touch as well. Um, 
we are our, all our bits and pieces are back for the new year. So we have our commissioners column, all of our email updates, uh, our web guidance on our SNSI web, new website, all video content, podcasts are up and up and moving again as well. Um, go and have a look at our webinars. There's the link for our webinars. Uh, there's the link for our lovely advice uh, team. What are our advice hours again, Heath, just so, so we know? Our advice team is available by phone from nine o'clock till five o'clock Monday to Friday, Australian Eastern Daylight Saving Time at the moment. Uh, Daylight Saving, of course, ends fairly soon. Yes. But you can email us anytime. We also now on the new website have got a online inquiry form. That's exactly right. Yeah. With, which is probably the preferred way of sending us a written request. That's on the contact us page, isn't yep. it? Yeah. So um, yeah, that's another way of getting in touch with us. Um, it's a very easy form to fill out. So for the time being, certainly that advice email address is still there as well. Yeah, definitely. And there's our other addresses through uh, through Facebook, through Twitter, and through YouTube. Um, and of course, YouTube has our previous uh, webinars and uh, previous videos and all of those bits and pieces. So that's about all the stuff that we're going to do today. We thank you for coming along. Um, thank you for taking the time to join us uh, for our first webinar for the year. Um, we will hang around a little bit longer just to answer some questions. Matt and Michael are typing away madly uh, in the other room. And uh, look, if you, uh, if you wish to give us any feedback, if you've got any questions, comments, that sort of thing, feel free to drop us a line via our education email address, education at acnc.gov.au. Um, thank you very much again for attending. Thank you to Matt and to Michael for typing away and answering questions. Uh, we bid farewell. And just before we do, our upcoming webinars will start being fed through to our webinars page. You can see the address there uh, in the coming days. Um, we have uh, one, two, three, four of them, I think, planned out or, sh or scheduled tentatively. So feel free to keep checking that page. And uh, if there's any that you're interested in registering for, uh, hit the button and, and do so. And uh, we'll look forward to having your company then, I suppose. But beyond that, thanks again. Thank you, Heath. Thank you. And we'll bid you farewell. See you later. Bye.